our ascension is in steps and that we all have the opportunity now for that growth. And that the more that we um, are open to it, open to understanding, allowing ourselves to open to the possibility that this connection is really there. Well, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Bernadette Thompson, and I am an intuitive ancestral healer and also a uh, a, a, um, spirit and grief coach. And uh, it was through my um, spiritually transformative experience that this opened up to me. I'm just have been lived kind of a normal life. And my, uh, my job was working with Um, students who suffered from trauma and grief. And I also worked in elder care. So I helped older people who were going through transitions, never expecting that I was going to go through a big transition in my life. And I also love to do ancestry. So I love to look back into the ancestors of of my life. And I did it for a lot of other people as well to find the stories that um, we are connected to and kind of to know our past and how important that is for us. So all this kind of came together as um, in about 2013, my husband came to me and um, he had been suffering from alcoholism. And he shared with me that he was very sick and he couldn't, um, he was really struggling. And you know, unfortunately, those next four and a half years were um, very difficult. So anybody that has had somebody in their family that's had that's had an addiction or uh, you know a trauma like that, it really um, is upsetting for the whole family. And so it was um, there was just a lot of uncertainty and a lot of chaos and. Uh, and he passed away after four and a half years. So it really was a difficult time. I also deeply uh, continue to go into the ancestors and learn the stories of the ancestors. And amazingly, what I ended up having uh, kind of a spiritual awakening because the ancestors came to me to help me during this really difficult time. And so what happened was the first thing that I had was called uh, a visitation. I had, and a visitation is like a dream, but you're connecting with a a loved one on the other side and you can really feel that connection even though you're still in a dream. And so I, um, so I had this dream and my great aunt, her name was Sister Lou, she came to me and I somehow in the dream, I knew this was really unusual and I didn't want to look at her. So I'm like turning my head and not wanting to look at her. And she, she looked at me, she held my hands and she, um, she looked right at me and she said to me, we hear your prayers. And I woke up and I realized in that moment that my ancestors who I had been, you know, when I actually was saying the rosary, I would imagine them sitting around a table with me. And so when she came to me in that in that dream or that visitation, I knew that my ancestors were with me and that they were guiding me on this very difficult journey. Um, my husband had a beautiful soul and it, but he, it's a, it's, it's a terrible disease and he, uh, he couldn't manage it. And so they were there to let me know that, that they saw me, they heard me, they knew I was praying to them. And so the next thing that happened that also opened up, uh, was a spiritual awakening, my my ancestry is all Irish, so I I am um, so even though I'm you know my ancestors came to the United States I was born here and um, but my ancestors all came from Ireland, and so this one night and I, I was saying the rosary again, 
And what happened was I began to say the rosary with an Irish brogue, which means that I was saying it with a with an Irish accent that is really thick. It's something that I wouldn't normally be able to talk that way. And I realized it that it was one of my my great grandmothers and I, I was coming through and channeling saying the saying the prayers with me. And I was, I couldn't believe it. I was didn't know, really didn't know what to do. But what what I realized was that she was with me. And again, it was that feeling that my ancestors understood what I was going through. So she said that every time I said those prayers, every time I said the rosary, she came back in saying it with me in an Irish brogue. And this went on for months. And so it was just an incredible um, experience to know that they, they understood what David was going through and what I was going through. And I knew their stories. I actually was able to look at my family tree. I do ancestral trees for people. So some of you may have known like in Ancestry.com, I, I use that for, for my family and I've used it for other um, people whose trees that I do for them. Um, but there are other ways you can do it. But I was able to look at my tree and discover which ancestor it was because her energy just came came to me and she was telling me that that it was her and it was my second great grandmother on my mother's side and i never knew her and i only knew a little bit about her story but i knew she was with me and you know at the going doing ancestry not only before david had gotten sick uh but also while he was so sick um helped me understand how deeply connected we are to our ancestors and that we when we understand their stories their stories are a part of us and their their um their legacy what what they went through uh, helps us to know more about who we are so when we I had some um, some of my ancestors that had gone through the Irish famine, and I learned about their story, about all the difficulties they went through. And I learned that my grandmother and her sisters had been orphaned and that they had been in orphanages when they were young. And, you know, I knew all of these things and it began to help me know that I was going to be okay, even though I was going through this really difficult time, because they showed me their strength and their resilience. And so I was able to feel them as, you know, as David was so sick. And they stayed with me even after he passed away. And when he passed away, um, I continued to open up. I realized that uh, the gift that was given me was that I could feel my ancestors around me. I could feel the ancestors of other people as I was doing their ancestral trees and helping them understand the grief and trauma that they were going through in their lives, that their ancestors and their family that had crossed were able to come were able to be around me. And I was able, able to share with, um, with people I work with um, the support and love that their ancestors were giving them and help them with some of the questions that they had that they wanted to know about how things were gonna be. And, and so I was able to, um, I, I say it that I'm, uh, I'm an intuitive, an intuitive um, I have medium, mediumship skills, but it's more of that real storytelling that comes from knowing their stories and, and helping um, other people really feel them. And as they are grieving or going through difficult loss, that uh, they can begin to feel that strength. 
and also know that they're surrounded. They're surrounded by their ancestors. They're surrounded by their loved ones. And they're surrounded by guides and beings or angels or um, special um, special beings on the other side. And many of us see signs and, and uh, you know, sometimes it'll be cardinals or it'll be um, butterflies. And we, th- and we know that our, our family is around us. This time of year in um, in Mexico, it is they celebrate their ancestors. It's coming up right around Halloween. Is they celebrate the Day of the Dead, where they call their ancestors in and they honor them, and they uh, continue that connection with them even though they have crossed over. So, so that's one of the gifts that I've been given. Um, since David's passing. And the other is that um, I have also now connected with a guide who is who is always with me um, and guiding me now so that he uh, they are my constant companion and they help me in just everyday living. They've helped it and guided me through, you know, the challenges of um, losing, my husband and the difficulties of having to create a new life and begin to do other things. So it has been, um, and they, they came to me, um, uh, you know, they, I felt them around me, but I, they, I, I didn't know how to communicate with them. And so I um, I don't know, some of you may know that, but have heard of people that have used pendulums or other ways of connecting with spirit. And I didn't like any of those because, it, it, you know, we were taught, I was taught as a kid, don't try and connect with spirit because you don't want, you know, that's not something that you want to do. So I was really reluctant to really trying to reach out, even though the ancestors were with me and I could feel family but reaching out and trying to connect with a spirit that I didn't know felt, um, uh, I was a little worried about it, but I decided to try a pendulum, which is where you hold it on a string and it you go back and forth and it gives you a yes and it gives you a no, and you can ask it questions. So I decided to try it. And I asked before I tried it, I asked that, it be for the highest good and that this only be loving, um, that it would be loving being a loving being and that I would be surrounded with white light and that this was a very loving thing to connect. And um, so, because when I first tried it, I kind of put it down because I was like, I don't want to do this. This is a little, so I tried it again and I, um, I did it. Only this time I asked, I asked, tell me yes and tell me no. And then I asked, I said, are you an angel? And they said, no. And then I asked, are you a guide? And they said, yes. And from that moment on, I, they have been with me. And we, I learned to connect with them and for them to guide me with the pendulum at first. Um, But eventually we were able to um, to put it aside because I realized they were talking to me without it, and I didn't I didn't need the pendulum anymore. So uh, so those are kind of the gifts that I got in my first you know in in the loss of David and his illness and with my ancestors and. So spiritually now my ancestors and my guide want me to share this with others and want me to help others and work with others to help them uh, open to spirit connection and open to understanding how deeply connected they are to their ancestors and how we can still talk with them and that they're there for us. So they, you know, we've talked about, and I was talking with somebody else. um, They've, you know, a lot of people um, talk about ascension and, and what, uh, and what that means. 
And really the information that my, um, that my guide is giving me is that we, we are all, the, the work that you are doing, bringing all of this information and opening this conversation up to the world is what they want us to be doing, to share that there is a higher, um, that there are, that we are connected with the other side that, and they are helping us in our lives here. And that we are all raising the vibration of um, humanity. So, which means, you know, compassion and forgiveness and non-judgment um, so that, we so that the world will begin to act in that way because we know there's so much conflict there's so much conflict now so what they said what they have shared with me is that um so i am rising as i am working with them you know they're telling me okay you've you've come up you know a, a little bit and that our our ascension is in steps and that we all have the opportunity now for that growth. And that the more that we um, are open to it, open to understanding, allowing ourselves to open to the possibility that this connection is really there, that they truly are guiding us is a big part of what they are trying to share because we can't do it alone. And we really have never been able, not able, we were never meant to do it alone. We were meant to do it with the guidance of the other side. And so that is really um, their, the, the important message that they're trying to give is that um, opening people up to sharing their stories is such a gift. And that they are, um, that the, the, the love and um, kindness and that they feel for you for bringing our, this story and bringing this to everybody so that we all can share and begin to grow. Um, but it's about continuing to, um, it's about continuing to ascend and kind of reaching levels where we're like, okay, you know, I, I, I feel like I've reached a higher level. So that's, that's kind of what they've been telling me. Everywhere in the world, we, you know, it, there are global conflicts that we all know about. Um, and we have, you know, there's a big, we have a big election here in the United States, and that's a big thing. Uh, so it is, you know, so much of that um, is what, is wh why they want us to be at a higher consciousness level so that we can make those decisions knowing that we know uh, what, um, what, that, what source, what our higher power wants for this world. And so the conflicts, they're not, they know that they're there, but they, in some ways they're teaching us because um, it is bringing us the, uh, the feeling of wanting to heal. And I think that, sense of healing, which is one of the things that they've gifted me with, with the ancestry, that sense of healing um, is what is going to help uh, raise the vibration. And when, you know, throughout, um, throughout the world, it is lack of healing that causes these conflicts. It's when people are um, not, not feeling heard or cared for, or that, the um, that the conflicts begin and they start to blame, you know, one another. So, you know, so that's where a lot of that comes from. I think that we are at, and they are telling me, so when I get information, my crown chakra lights up. And so it's lit up right now. So um, they, what they're, what they're sharing is, um, we're going to continue, both will happen. We will see a great amount of healing in, in some areas, but that conflict doesn't go away quickly. And so there's, you know, there, there will continue to be conflict, but the base of people 
who are healing and wanting to rise is going to grow. So that is where the, um, that is what we can look forward to is that more and more people are allowing themselves to, um, to want to look into how we're, we are, um, how we are rising and how the, that this higher consciousness and healing is happening. And the more, the more that happens, the more healing that will happen. So what we can look forward to in 2025 and in 2026 is just an increase that this is uh, people who are now understanding and connecting with spirit and understanding that we have a working relationship with our higher power. Um, it is spreading. And that is what will help. That is what will help humanity. There is a, uh, I do believe, yes, I do believe there is a big shift that is coming. And I think that uh, that big shift will help us. Um, it's all part of um, this awakening that we are going through. And there are many teachers now. Uh, you know, there are many, many teachers. And I think that is um, that is where a lot of the wisdom is too. And what I what I often say to people when they are seeking and listening to others and wanting to learn more, to follow their heart, to listen to what's being shared with them, and that their inner guidance, their their inner guidance from their guides and from their uh, loved ones and ancestors will let them know if what they're following is correct. And so when, when we are looking to um, looking for this shift and looking for more information, sometimes we may find things and be like, I don't know if that's right. That doesn't feel quite right. To follow your inner guidance and know that you will be guided by your, um, by your, your guides and your ancestors to help you find the right path. The reason that there's not a lot of information about what the big shift might be is um, it is uh, there's so much still going on in the world. And I think as as uh, humans in this world, in this 3D world, we like to see things happen quickly. We want it to fix like, let's fix it, and, you know, and and it doesn't it it doesn't happen that way because in when we cross, there's no time. So time is one of those things that's, that is kind of funny. And um, so the, the big shift, um, I don't know if it will come with a lot of, of, uh, you know, fireworks and, and things like that, or whether it'll be a quiet big shift that comes in and uh, that we recognize it after it's here rather than seeing it come in. Um, there's, yeah, there's so much going on with the election and with the economy. It is, um, and and it's so split. You know, when you look at, um, you look at the polls and you see that it's it's so split. And, uh, and you, you know, it, it is, and that is where a, a shift should be coming, like to, to help us truly understand where we should be um, the, the opinions are so different. And so we, no matter where you turn, you know, and I try, um, and, uh, so there, so there's a lot of work to be done there. And I think that with, when one side or the other side wins, it's a, it's going to be a huge thing for, um, the, the economy here and the, um, you know, economy for the world, because we're all so connected. So the messages they give me are really um, whatever. I mean, they talk with me about things during my day. So, you know, they're, they are, this is um, the, when the ancestors are with me, they, and they will help me help others. And so the, a lot of the ancestral work is when I'm working with other people and helping their ancestors come in. And my answers are, oh, ancestors are always there kind of helping bring them in. So that's kind of, but when I talk with my guide, he, um, he, they, he says it's a he, but they're really not any, you know, it's not really um, either, but um, they have helped me 
work through some of the difficulties. Um, they've helped me work through uh, forgiveness um, and compassion for what David was going through. And so they worked with me like we would, I would read books and they would, I would ask them questions and they would answer the questions that I would. So I might say, they, you know, I might've read something about how we can connect with the other side. And I would ask him, is that a way we can connect? And they would say, they would either say, yes, yes, that's true. Or sometimes they would say, no, that doesn't really work. You know, so they, so they guide me in everything. They guided me tonight because, uh, well, tonight for me, <laughs> um, but just to get ready to come and be with you that I wanted my spirit to be uh, in the right place and um, that everything would be, that the lighting would be good and the sound would be good. And they were here assuring me that all would be well and that um, that they were here. So they, and sometimes you'll see me, um, a lot of times if they say something, I'll, I'll put my hands like this and it means that their information is coming through them. And then sometimes I, I literally will shake my head yes or shake my head no, because uh, they're giving me an answer. So uh, it is often um, if there are questions that they can be channeled, channeled through me from them. And I want to share it because it is so I want them to know how deeply connected we are with our guides and how how loving they are and how much they know about what is going on in your family right now. And I'll say, I'll tell it quickly, but my, um, when, when my husband died, my sister and I kind of, um, there was a lot of stuff going on and we kind of had a, um, a separation, so to speak, you know, we weren't as close as we were before. And, and I felt very, very sad and hurt about it. And, um, and so I was working with my guide on forgiveness and she was the oldest and one of eight children and she was the oldest. And so she had had all this responsibility. So I think she just was tired of worrying about people in the family. And um, so I was working with my guide about forgiveness, not only for her, but for, for David and for myself. And when um, this one night uh, we were, my guide had, shared with me that I, that I had gone to a higher level of forgiveness. And I said to him, said to them, is it because I forgave David, my husband, because he had been so sick? And they said, no. And I said, is it because I forgave my sister? And they said, yes. And a half hour later, my brother called me to tell me my sister had passed away. And I asked my guide why they had shared that with me. And it was because they wanted me to know that I had forgiven her before she crossed over and that we had this loving connection that I didn't. Uh, and she died, she died unexpectedly. It was, but she came in right away. She was with me. And um, so they were, it's just this amazing, loving, uh, you know, we were having, I was having this conversation with my guide and then my brother called. So I want the world to know how deeply loved they are by their ancestors, by their guides, by their loved ones that cross, because all of the healing that happens, happens when you cross. I would say the, the most important thing is to be open, is to be open to, um, to learning about our spiritual connections to learning because the more that we expand and it gives us information about the world and how the world, you know, and that a lot of ancestry comes into this because when we look back, we in, in um, we've gone through these cycles of conflict before and we have risen. And then again, sometimes we fall. So there is a lot of, so being able to allow ourselves to know that um, there is wisdom in our ancestry that can help us now. And also to just know that, um, uh, that, that we are, that we're guided, that this is this, that, and as we allow, as people allow themselves to learn 
and to uh, discover more about the spirit side, that that is what what, uh, what is wanted so that they can begin to heal more. So I just want to say thank you. I'm so glad. Um, I'm so happy there are so many listeners out there. And I hope that I've shared something with you that will help you understand more. I can, if you are interested in learning more about what I do, there is information uh, below. If you are, that you can connect with me and uh, we could do some work together. But also uh, if there is something I've shared that you wanna make a comment and and uh, I would love to know what your thoughts were about um, what I've shared tonight. So I truly uh, hope you are having a wonderful day and a blessed day. And so grateful that, uh, that we can all share in this wonderful community. So thank you very much.